Hey everyone, Pete Werner here with your Dis Daily Fix for Monday, December 19th, 2016. Here's what's happening today. Rogue One, a Star Wars story, was the top film at the box office this weekend, bringing in an estimated $155 million domestically and $290 million worldwide. The film's success led to the third largest opening of the year, the fourth largest December weekend in history, and the 12th largest opening of all time. Rogue One also becomes only the second December opening to hit over $100 million. 2015 Star Wars The Force Awakens was the first. Rogue One has received an A rating on CinemaScore and an 84% on Rotten Tomatoes. There are, however, five other new films coming out in wide release over the next couple of weeks for the holiday season that do have the potential to give it some competition, including Assassin's Creed, Passengers, and Sing. On a personal note, I have seen this film twice since it was released, and it's awesome. I absolutely loved it. You should check out our review on youtube.com slash disunplugged because we loved it too. Uh, Rogue One, a Star Wars story, has also come under some scrutiny by some people as the film is now being accused of having, and I really can't believe this, but anti-Donald Trump undertones. The accusations state that the filmmakers added reshot scenes to the blockbuster to be inherently anti-Donald Trump. And this has sparked a hashtag dump Star Wars campaign by some of the president-elect's supporters who believe the evidence for the reshoots uh, come from tweets by Gary Whitta and Chris Weitz, both of whom are writers for the film. A tweet by Whitta that, ha- Whitta that has since been deleted said, that, quote, the empire is a white supremacist organization, end quote, and cracks me up that supporters of Donald Trump think think that's about them. In addition to that, Witta and Whites both changed their Twitter avatars to the Rebel Alliance logo with a safety pin on it. The safety pin has been adopted as a pro-diversity symbol since Donald Trump's election. Disney says the reshoots were not made to create an anti-Donald Trump message. Disney CEO Bob Iger stated, quote, frankly, this is a film the world should enjoy, It is not a film that is in any way a political film. There are no political statements in it at all, end quote. In other movie-related news, the Walt Disney Company, Lucasfilm, 20th Century Fox, and Warner Brothers Entertainment have won a lawsuit against VidAngel, a streaming service that filters movies to make them more family-friendly. A U.S. District Court judge granted the injunction against VidAngel after the movie studio sued the company to stop, quote, illegally ripping DVDs and streaming without a license, end quote. VidAngel service allowed customers to rent the DVDs for $20 in order to stream the film, then sell them back for $19, thus allowing them to pay only $1 for a filtered streamed movie. In the suit, the movie studio said VidAngel was operating as an unlicensed video-on-demand streaming service. Some of the films available on VidAngel were not yet available on other approved streaming services, So they claim that VidAngel was undercutting undercutting the studio's windowing system, according to The Hollywood Reporter. VidAngel claimed the Family Movie Act of 2005 protected them. That That law allows consumers to edit their own movies for personal use. The judge also cited that law but looked at it differently, saying the Family Movie Act is talking about authorized copies of the film and that VidAngel's content was not authorized. VidAngel says they will be appealing the decision. Over on the Diz today, our featured article is by our newest contributor, Charles Boda, and is entitled, A Nerd's First Impression of Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. The article does contain some spoilers, especially if you speak fluent nerd, so be warned. And trending on the boards today is a thread started by poster Harambe, who has a trip to Walt Disney World coming up in January. The poster received an email from Disney advising her of some changes made to her scheduled FastPass Plus uh, attractions due to park hours being extended. Head over to the thread entitled January Park Hours Changing. Just got a FastPass Plus notice about it to see the complete list of changes over on our theme parks, attractions, and strategies forum. And I am sorry I am having so much trouble getting through this daily fix today. It's Christmas week. I'm exhausted. I just want to play video games um, and go back and see Star Wars again. Now, if you are heading into the Orlando parks tomorrow, expect cloudy skies with a high of 75 and a low of 61. And it is December here, for the love of God, and it is humid and nasty. 
And I really, I just want it to be chilly. And I know the people in the Northeast are going like, oh, shut up. It's 75 and we're in an ice storm. Can you just send a little bit of it down? I don't want all of it. Just a little. Just to chill us off. Let it feel like Christmas here. I'll be quiet now before somebody throws something at me. Out in Disneyland, sunny skies tomorrow with a high of 74 and lows dropping into the mid-40s. See, they're getting mid-40s. But we, no, no, we have to, we have to have August. You can find links to all these stories and more on our Daily Fix main page at wdwinfo.com slash dailyfix. That will do it for me today. Join us again tomorrow for the next installment of the Diz Daily Fix. Have a great day, everyone. (laughs) 